Pakistani is going to fucking beat him. Okay.
We're just about set for third period action. The Fredericton Express trailing the Nova Scotia Oilers by a 3-1 to one score. The Express have outshot Nova Scotia 28-17 through two periods. That shows the kind of domination they've had. But Warren Skorodensky has simply been brilliant in goal tonight for the Oilers. Express had the better chances in that second period. It's unfortunate they only got one goal. That means they're in a bit of a hole here to come back in the third period. Their record in coming back in the third when they're behind is not good. Elaine Lemieux out there with Mike Hoff and David Bruce to get the period started. Hoff plays back to Donnelly over to Bellin. Bellin moving up the left side, shoots it cross corner. Bounces right to the front of the net where Skordensky covers up. Express have to win games like this if they're going to make the playoffs. Uh, Nova Scotia is a fine team and all, but you've got to dig down at this time of the year when you're six points out of the last playoff spot. They can't afford to go eight. It's with only one game left with Sherbrooke. These are the kind of games you got to win. you got to win at home. After tonight, the Express will have only ten games left this season. Trying to make up that six points, of course, on Sherbrooke. And Sherbrooke will have a game in hand after tonight. Both teams have played 69 coming into tonight's contest. So it is very critical that they win this one. Only two seconds left in the uh, Boudreau penalty. The Express put on some pressure at the tail end of the second. And only two seconds remain in that penalty. Now there seems to be some more discussion going on down around the timekeeper's bench. Referee McGeo is uh, chatting with Mike Huff of the Express and Dwayne Bodker. Both report back to their respective coaches. And we're just about set to resume play. Faceoff coming up to Skorodensky's left. A lot of people talking before the game of a Brubaker Zemlak showdown. We haven't seen it. Brubaker's played pretty good up and down hockey on his wing there. He's got a goal tonight. And uh, for a guy with his reputation, he's played pretty well tonight, I think. He has. Some were indicating he doesn't fight as much as he used to, probably because he's earned the respect uh, of a lot of those in the league. Eva Roo on the faceoff against Mike Rogers. Once again, some players a little impatient. Getting back to Brubaker, I guess when you prove yourself as a tough guy in the NHL, there's no need to uh, belager the point in the American Hockey League. Uh, the people here know all about it. Exactly. Off the draw, puck comes to the corner. Rogers gets it ahead to Cote, who clears it down the ice. Boudreaux's back on. Donnelly coming from behind his own net to set things up. Plays it up for Bruce. David Bruce. Back hands it down into the corner. Skorodensky out of the net. Right on the stick of Bruce, who took a quick shot, trying to catch Skorodensky, but he was ready for it. There's a blast from the point. Bellin took it. Skorodensky made the save there. Boca Boom on the left side for Larmer. Larmer dumps it into the corner. Cote into four check. His pass right on the stick of Mike Huff. Huff coming up the left side for the Express. Pass over on the stick of Bruce. Bruce breaking in. Kicked out by Skorodensky. In the corner, Boudreaux plays it behind the net, but Lemieux is there. Lemieux tied up by Wilson. Now Rick Wilson takes it for Nova Scotia. Wilson for Cote. Cote's long cross-ice pass for Larmer. Taylor Hall's on him, and Julian takes the puck ahead to Lemieux. Elaine Lemieux by himself, trying to put a move on the defense. It's taken by Cote. Cote clears it. Down to Fredericton zone. Rogers moving in. Flipping it across, Taylor Hall was there. He lifted the stick of Larmer, and he is getting a hooking call. Taylor Hall gets the gate. Not a good call. You don't you don't like to take uh, calls like that, but I'd have to see it again. I didn't think he deserved the penalty. Got the hooking call. He did have the stick on him. Of course, he was trying to keep... <laughs> what is that? I, I didn't catch that, but uh, I see uh, if you look at the express bench right now, Eve Haru is over there, bent over. He, he was upended. It could have been a penalty against Nova Scotia. He uh, fell on his arm in a weird way, and he went off. He's still sitting over there getting some attention from the trainer. He looks to be all right now, but he fell awkwardly on his arm. I hope that's nothing serious. It doesn't look to be. Behind the net, Poudrier trying to bring it out. 
Mike Huff in the corner, plays it back to Julian behind the net, rifles it around the boards, too far ahead for Lupel. It goes down into Nova Scotia territory. In the corner, John Miner gets to it first. Miner tried to pull up, but he fell down, losing control to Lupel. Out in front, a chance for Huff. Now it's cleared in front again where Mike Rogers takes it, plays ahead to Solheim. Ken Solheim circling with Shervin, plays it over to Shervin. Into the corner for Solheim once again. Julian Rock Solheim. Rogers out of the corner. Mike Rogers back to the point. Play fair. Over to Miner. Miner's quick shot. Wide. Comes back to the point to play fair. Miner takes it again. Miner in the side of the net. That was Shervin. Express killing the penalty. And play fair has to regroup as he took it out across the blue line. Mike Rogers. Quick shot taken there by Miner, but it was offside against Nova Scotia. The Express have to kill this penalty off. They cannot give up another goal. It's as simple as that. They're down three to one right now. That's going to be hard enough to get two goals. They can't, they will not get three in this period. I don't think the way Nova Scotia is sort of tightening up, but they got to take advantage of these, these chances that they, they're getting. Of course, right now they're, they're shorthanded, but sooner or later, Skorodetsky is going to have to give up a goal. He has been sharp. One Express almost got a short, uh, sorry Andy, they almost got a shorthanded goal there, so really they're playing pretty well so far this period. Just under a minute left in the penalty now to the Express. Rick Wilson taking it behind his own net for Nova Scotia. Check from behind by David Bruce. Now big shooting it in around the boards, held there by Gosselin. Bellin shooting it up the boards on the left side for McIntyre, who shoots it down into Nova Scotia territory. 35 seconds left in Taylor Hall's penalty. Mike Mahler taking it behind his net for the Oilers, trying to set something up. Here comes Mahler to Buka Boom. Head to Biggs, who banks it off the boards, and at the side of the net, Gosselin. Steers it into the corner. Biggs checked there by McIntyre. Buka Boom back to Wilson, lost it off his skate, couldn't hold it in. Dave Bruce tries to come away. Here's McIntyre with a chance. McIntyre cutting in front of Buka Boom, and the puck rolled just outside the post. And there's a penalty coming up against Nova Scotia, a holding call. That's a big, uh, big break for the Express. They needed one. What a nice individual effort by Dunk McIntyre there. A small guy held off his defender, and it just trickled by the open, open side of Skorodensky. Nice play by Dunk McIntyre. It was a good move to cut in front of Buka Boom, who gets the gate. So he did draw the penalty and nearly scored. Just four seconds left in Taylor Hall's penalty. That one coming at 13.22 of the third period, or 3.22, sorry. Good chance for the Express, who trail it by two. It's almost a must-win situation. Lupel and Cote on the faceoff to Skordensky's right. Express have their power play alignment out there, anticipating Hall's return. Rogers controls it now. Hall is back on the ice. The Express are on the power play. Nova Scotia shooting it out to center. Poudrier over to Bellin. Neil Bellin rips it in around the boards, and the Express go into forecheck. Miner banks it up over the glass, and the faceoff will be deep in Nova Scotia territory. Well, they've got the horses out there right now. Taylor Hall and Tony Curry, the Hall, the hottest express scorer, and Curry, the leading scorer of the team. So they're, they're the people you want to have out there. Gary Lupel in between them. And then Neil Bellin, the quarterback of and, this power play. And Poudre on the other point. They're looking for a goal here. Skorodensky's been the problem there. Minute 41 to go in the Buka Boom penalty. Lupel and Cote. Cote wins the draw. Miner rips it off the boards. Held in by Poudrier to Lupel. Lupel in the corner, loses control, and Cote flips it down into Fredericton's territory. Bellin coming all the way back to take it behind his own net. Bellin setting up the power play, bringing it out slowly. Neil Bellin hits center and shoots it off the end board. Skorodensky shoots it over along the boards. Bellin holding it in. Taylor Hall in the corner, it's taken by Cote. Cote behind the net for Rick Wilson. Rick Wilson takes his time and rifles it off the glass. Comes all the way down behind the Fredericton goal. One minute left in the Buka Boom penalty. Fredericton unable to get on track so far on this power play. 
Bellin for Elaine Lemieux. Changes being made. Bruce breaking up the left side. Flips it into the corner. Mahler's back there first. Tried to clear it, but fanned on it. Now it is cleared by Nova Scotia. Coming down to the Fredericton line and coming back after it is Belland. Belland being checked by Mahler. Graves intercepts, but couldn't control it. Gosselin plays to the corner. David Bruce bringing it out. Just 30 seconds to go in the penalty. Botker coming back. Banks it off the board. Schliebner taking it. Plays it to the near side. Clements, Scott Clements crossing center. Less than 20 seconds in the penalty as the puck is flipped over the glass. 17 seconds to go in Boca Boom's penalty. Kind of surprised at the way Nova Scotia is playing this. First off, they're leading 3-1 to one with under 15 minutes left in the period. Then they're sending two guys way in deep on the when they're shorthanded. I would think that they'd be playing a little more conservative. They were just going right after the express and had a good chance. Had Graves seen that, that puck was laying just right out in front of uh, Mario Gosselin when Bellin failed to clear the zone. And if Graves had seen that, we might be looking at the fourth goal here. No question. You have to look back at Biggs' chance to jam it in a wide open net in the dying seconds of the second period, too, as a break for the Express. Of course, we can't forget that Skorodensky save with his mask. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Schliebner crossing into Nova Scotia zone. Miner behind the net, ripping it around the boards. Clements tries to hold it in, but can't as it comes all the way back to Fredericton territory. And that will kill off Buka Boom's penalty. We'll be even now. 14 and a half minutes to play in the third period. Express trail at 3-1. Scott Clements off the stick of McIntyre. Goes to the end boards. Miner plays in the side. Stevens is in there for checking as is McIntyre. Comes back to Clements. Rips a shot. Went off a leg and off the glass in behind the net. McIntyre in the corner. Plays the side of the net. Stevens over into the corner. Stevens puts a move on. Out in front for McIntyre. Jammed it just wide. Buka Boom now steers it out, and it comes down into Fredericton territory. Clements takes it and goes behind his own net. Long pass up for Stevens on the left side. Mike Stevens tries to put a move on Wilson. Does get by him, taking the puck in the corner. Mike Stevens looking strong. Backhands it. Good shot right on. Knocked down by Skorodensky. Solheim takes it now. Ken Solheim. McIntyre deflected it. Now Gruel tied up by Botker. They jam it up against the boards, and there will be a face-off inside the Nova Scotia blue line. Mike Stevens, a good shift there, uh, playing the way he did last Saturday night. He's played a pretty good game. Not as aggressive as he was on Saturday night, but he still played a good game. And that He's pretty tough to move off the puck when he puts his mind to it, and that last rush uh, was one of those times. Gary Lupel again out with his line. Tony Curry on the right, Taylor Hall on the left. Poudrier and Julian man the points. Dean Decision out there with Brew Baker and Lou Crawford, who's moved up to forward again. Rick Wilson takes it off the draw, plays to Botker, who'll take it behind his own net for Nova Scotia. Botker plays it to Rick Wilson, back to Botker behind the net. Gary Lupel forechecking, steals the puck, throws it out front, nobody there. Rick Wilson plays it ahead for Brubaker. Brubaker crossing into Fredericton territory, but uh, Dean Decision was offside for the Oilers. Gary Lupel's making a lot happen out there. He forechecked well in that last exchange there. Didn't get anything out of it, though. Put it out to an open wing, but he's played a good game. Faceoff coming up outside the Fredericton blue line. 13-18 left in the third period. The Express down by two. We mentioned they've never won when trailing going into the third. They would like to break that spell tonight. Rick Wilson inside the blue line. Rips one. Pad save. Gosselin steer to the corner. Comes out to Crawford in the high slot. Knocked away by Bellin. Rick Wilson plays it off the glass. Jerry Bishop, the PA announcer, almost jumped out of his skin down there. Donnelly plays at the sideboards. Lou Crawford moving in. Now decision from the side of the net. Plays to Wilson. Lupel was there to tie him up. Loose puck picked up by Botker. Fired a shot. Went off the side of the net. In the corner, Donnelly tied up by Brubaker. Curry plays it out. Taylor Hall to Belland on the left side. Belland moving up. Crossing the line. Putting on a move. Then he is smothered by Botker. Fans looking for a penalty. Lupel plays it back to Donnelly. Ripping one just wide. Skorodensky couldn't cover it up over on the far side. Donnelly out in front. Taken by Luke Crawford now. 
Crawford for the Oilers. As the Express makes some changes, Botker plays it off the boards. Going to come all the way down to behind the net where it's taken by Poudrier. Poudrier up on the left side for Stevens. Gives it back to Poudrier, crossing center ice. Hits the blue line, offside, McIntyre was in. Got to give credit to the Nova Scotia Oilers. They forecheck right, they came out the first shift and they're still forechecking the same way. Usually teams with a two goal lead will just lay back and, and try to let the opposition come and just play it kitty by the door as they say, but the, the Oilers haven't done that. They've been up and down the, the ice as much as the Express have and uh, Express open up, I think they're gonna be in a little bit of trouble, but they have to. They, they're in that position where they have to open up now. If time is a factor, 12-01, they need two goals. The Oilers uh, certainly playing aggressively on the road. As we mentioned, they have an outside shot of capturing that final playoff spot. They have to win almost every one of their last 13 games, though. Julian plays up to McIntyre. McIntyre knocked to the ice by Larmer, who stuck a leg out. No call. Boudreaux plays to Larmer. Jeff Larmer over to Bookaboom. Bookaboom inside his own zone. Plays over on the other side. It's taken by Boudreaux. Bruce Boudreaux. Off the boards, moving in Ray Cote. And Larmer couldn't jam it in. Nice stick play by Gosselin. Now coming back McIntyre for the Express. McIntyre on the right side for Julian. Julian steers to the corner to McIntyre. Now it's shot taken by Stevens. Knocked away by Skorodensky. And it's cleared out. Claude Julian taking it at center ice. Julian moving ahead. Steers down into the corner. Jim Playfair will take it behind the Nova Scotia net. Quick pass up to Cote. Cote simply shoots it down to the line. Belland up ahead for Stevens. Stevens loses control taken by Biggs. Off the boards. Belland off the boards. Haru plays out to Lemieux. Wasn't even close on that shot. Donnelly tries. Went off a leg. Biggs takes it now. Plays ahead for Mahler. Mahler's pass too weak for Graves. It's not cleared by Bellin. Biggs takes it now. Biggs can't control it. Bellin shooting it into the corner. Miner taking it behind his own net. John Miner shooting it out. Taken by Tony Curry now of the Express. Curry flipping it into Nova Scotia territory. Don Biggs into the corner. Plays ahead for Mahler. Steered out into neutral ice where Gary Lupel takes it now for the Express. Nova Scotia seems to be going into a bit of a defensive shell now. Bellin takes a shot and that hit Biggs and he is in pain. Curry took the shot and it caught Biggs right in the midsection or, or higher. And uh, that hurts. That brings a break in the action with 10 minutes and four seconds showing on the clock here in the third period. Play is scrambly in the last few minutes, Andy. Nobody really getting anything going. The Oilers are content to do that. They don't mind if they play it in the neutral zone. The Express not getting any, they're getting the chances, but they're just not, there's no one there. It seems to be at the other end of the pass or the shot or the deflection or whatever, but uh, they can put the two together. I think they'll, uh, they'll be all right. Big line out there now. This, this line has got to do something offensively. They've got the, the stats and they're playing pretty well to, to prove it so Savard is really leaning on this line of Lupul, Hall and Curry of course Savard would take a goal from the trainer if he could you know <laughs> he just needs a goal it doesn't matter who gets it Tony Curry or Richard Zemlak doesn't matter Rick Wilson taking it behind his own net intercepted there by Lupul. puck is flipped up and Skorodensky gloves it there will be a face off coming up to his left as we mentioned earlier, one of the face-off men that Savard was leaning on earlier in the year was Mark Curtin, but Curtin, of course, and, and Savard are not seeing eye to eye right now, and uh, since Savard's the coach, that leaves Curtin on the sidelines, not happy with the way he's been playing. So if they get a, a Mark Curtin playing the way he can play, uh, he's a good addition for these big face-offs in the offensive zone. With Gord Donnelly and Danielle Poudrier being sent down by Quebec, Tom Corrales has been shipped to Muskegon. Finally, Savard has the, the personnel he wants. Now it's a matter of getting the performance out of them. Deep in goal with Gosselin and Caprice, at least for the time being. Lots of defensemen and uh, really a full roster for the first time in recent memory. 
Lupla wins the draw. Curry, quick shot just wide. Poudrier from the point, shooting. Curry was in front. Skorodensky made another big save. Shervin clears it out. Poudrier plays it over to Don, uh, Julian. Back to Poudrier. Poudrier ahead for Taylor Hall. Intercepted by Rogers. Hall tries again, plays it over to Julian in the corner. Julian, front of the net for Poudrier. Poudrier's pass up on the left side for Hall. Long pass ahead for Lupel, who goes down, then comes back up. Penalty coming up against number 11, Solheim, who took Lupel down on the far side, and the Express get another chance. If ever there was a player you want in the net point blank range on the goaltender, it would be Tony Curry, 28 goal man so far this season. Skorodensky with the save. Seems to be the story tonight. And they're going to try to put more of that pressure on him and hope he cracks as they have another power play chance. Solheim getting the gate. Face off coming up to the left of Skorodensky. Been a busy man here tonight. This is a key point of the hockey game. Seems rather cliche to say so, but the Express really do need a goal here. Eru wins the draw. Lemieux working the puck over to Poudrier. Poudrier at the side, back to Lemieux. Alain Lemieux to Bellin. Back to Lemieux. Into the corner for Poudrier. Side of the net, that's Eru. Poudrier, Bellin shooting. Didn't get much on it, rebound. Hump had a chance, but couldn't get anything on it either. Boudreau sends it down the ice. A makeshift power play, of course, the uh, Lupel line was tired, having just finished a shift. Now Belland leading the uh, power play up front, Lemieux, Aru, and Huff. Off the end board, Skordensky leaves it for Playfair. In the corner, Lemieux drops it back to Belland. Belland rips one, just wide. Lemieux in the corner again, back to Belland. Pass to Poudrier, Poudrier from the left point. Plays into the side of the net. Yves Haru is there. In behind the net. Plays to Lemieux. Lemieux. In for Hoff. Hoff working in. Throws it across for Poudrier. Had Skorodensky down, but couldn't get that puck upstairs. Now Lemieux back to Bellin. Bellin winds up. Goes through and hits somebody in front. Haru looks to be hurt. Very slow getting to his feet as Nova Scotia clears it the length of the ice. That's the same arm he fell on earlier in the period. I wonder if it's... Similar problem. I wonder if that arm is, is affecting him some. We'll have to wait and see. He skated right off the bench immediately after taking that hit. Still on the power play, the Express, and they will be for 29 seconds, barring a goal. Play is whistled down outside the Nova Scotia blue line. And that's where the faceoff will be had. 28 seconds showing. Not so only is the Express suffering from a good goaltender and bad breaks they're just not getting any luck at all I mean they've had some good chances in this in this period and maybe in other games they go in but uh, tonight it's Skorodensky who's got the luck and he's keeping the puck out I don't know how he made a couple of those saves maybe that's what Scott Clements and Andy Schliebner are discussing there 747 showing on the game clock not much rest for the weary look who's out there again Lupul between Hall and Curry and there they are for checking. Curry tries to kick it loose. Taylor Hall can't come up with it. Now Biggs rips it, but not out. Clements to Lupel in the corner. In behind the net, Curry for checking. Taylor Hall takes it at the side of the net. Back to the point to Schliebner. Schliebner over to Clements. Clements quick shot. Curry tried to deflect it. Finally steered away. Schliebner holds it in. Clements intercepted by Bukaboom, who shoots it down the ice, and that kills off the penalty. Solheim back on the ice. Another power play chance squandered. It's three to one. Taylor Hall plays it to Schliebner. Schliebner for Clements. Puck is taken by Rick Wilson there. Wilson ahead. Solheim, or Shervin clears it up. Clements tied up by Rogers. Puck that was is, a mugging. There should have been a penalty on that play. Solheim takes it. Now Rick Wilson. Wilson inside his own zone. Gives to, gets the return pass. Mike Rogers up along the boards. Shoots it down to the corner. Gord Shervin goes after it. Schliebner's there first. Buck is kicked loose. Poudrier taking it over on the far side. Passing up for Stevens, trying to go through the middle. Goes the length of the ice. Wilson is back. 
touches it and icing is called against the Express. The Express can't afford to go one good game at home, one bad game at home. They've got to play all good games the rest of this year. They've got to win the majority. They've got to take eight or so of these last 11 games. That's the way you got to look at it anyway. You don't know what Sherbrooke's going to do, but if you look at winning eight of 11, that's a pretty good percentage, and that's what they have to do at this stage of the season, so. That's true. It doesn't look good right now. This game, uh, Nova Scotia's forechecking combined with bad breaks and solid goaltending from Skorodensky, I guess, sums it up in a nutshell, but sure need the two points. 6.21 left in the third period. Nova Scotia clinging to that two-goal lead. All three of their goals coming back in the first. Now McIntyre plays it behind his own net to Poudrier. Danielle Poudrier, pass out for McIntyre, breaking across center ice. He shoots it in around the boards. Skordensky shoots it to the corner decision, plays it to Miner in front of his own net. Now Brubaker can't control it. Julian takes it for the Express. To Poudrier. Poudrier for McIntyre. McIntyre wheeling out of his own zone on the right side. Hits center and shoots it. And it goes high over the glass into the crowd. 5.50 remaining. Things are looking pretty bleak for the Express. He's sending out Haru, Lemieux, and Mike Huff. I think we're going to see a lot more of Lupul and Curry and Hall before this one's over. You've got to have those guys out there, and Andre is using them about as much as he could possibly use them. I think they've seen a lot of ice time. No fault of Andre Savard's. Off the faceoff. Boudreau wins it. Cleared by Nova Scotia down into Fredericton territory. Belland is back for it. Gord Donnelly clears up to Mike Hoff. Hoff moving up the left side to Lemieux. Lemieux on the right side. Now taking it, Bruce Boudreau. Boudreau tied up from behind. He simply shoots it into Fredericton territory. Belland back for it. Bellin behind his own net for the Express. Plays it to Donnelly on the right side. Passing out for a breaking Mike Huff, who is creamed by Bukaboom. What an open ice hit that was. Now Bellin comes back into his own zone. Novi makes some changes. Biggs intercepts. He's all alone. Biggs in on Gosselin. Shoots. Saved by Gosselin. Don't think Biggs got all he wanted to on that shot. But Gosselin stood his ground. Donnelly in the corner. See if the Express get a lift from that big save on the breakaway. Huff on the left side, passing it up for Eru. Goes the length of the ice. Steve Graves makes the touch, and it's icing against Fredericton. I guess if you look past the first period, the Express lead this game one to nothing. And you look at the first period, uh, the goal at 139 was directly due to good forechecking and perhaps a little sloppy play in the Express zone. The other two were screenshots from the point which Gosselin had no chance to see because there was a lot of traffic in front of him. Other than that, I guess you'd have to say the Express at least shots on goal would indicate they've outplayed the Oilers, but I guess the best word to describe Nova Scotia tonight is opportunistic. They've made the best of their chances. No question. Julian up ahead for Lupul. Lupul breaking across center. Now Curry takes it. Flips ahead for Taylor Hall. Has trouble controlling it along the boards. In the corner, Taylor Hall. Curry takes it. Tony Curry. Back to the far right point. Julian winds up. Didn't get much on it. Now Curry tries to shovel it in front. Taylor Hall takes it in the corner. Hall to Poudrier. Back to Hall. Gets it to Poudrier. Shuffles it off to Curry, who dumps it into the corner. Steered out in front. It is taken there by the Oilers and cleared down the ice. Julian picks it up. Claude Julian being forechecked by Graves. Manages to lose Graves. Pass up ahead, hopped over Curry's stick. The Express will make some changes. Playfair coming back. Up ahead to Mike Mahler at center. Shoots it down. Gosselin steers. Mike Rogers racing in for it. Gosselin leaving it for Belland. Pass up ahead for Mike Stevens. He hits McIntyre, crossing center. McIntyre shoots it down in to Nova Scotia territory. Bukaboom. That is uh, Shervin trying to Get it out of his own zone. Belland holds it in. In behind the net, Skordensky leaves for Jim Playfair. Playfair flips it out, and it's knocked down by Gord Donnelly. Donnelly shooting it into Nova Scotia territory. Offside against the Express, just 3.16 left in the third. I guess the goaltending of Warren Skordensky has really 
pumped up this Oiler team. They're still, uh, that last rush up there, they had three men in deep. This is when you're up three to one with three, three and a half minutes remaining in a period. I, I think you played a little more conservative than that, but uh, who am I to say? Larry Kish is the coach and they're winning three one, so you can't argue with it, but certainly the, the Express have got one of those long passes complete. Uh, you never know. Played a little aggressive with the, you know, with a 3-1 lead late in the game on the road. Especially on the road. Julian shoots it down to the end boards. Getting to it there first for the Oilers was uh, Wilson, and it's called on the high stick. Face-off in the Nova Scotia zone. They got Lemieux out to take the draw, an important face-off, as they all are right at this point of the game. Lemieux, Aru, and uh, Huff is this line. It seems like uh, Savard is going pretty much exclusively with, well, he is using that third line with McIntyre, but this line and and the Lupa line are getting most of the ice. Down the stretch, it's been just those two lines. Julian gets back to make the touch, and icing is called against Nova Scotia. So the faceoff will come back deep in Novi territory, 3-0-1 to go. Things looking bleak at this point. Andre Savard giving some instruction to Yves Haru as he skates back on the ice. And out there to take the draw for Nova Scotia against Lemieux is Cote. Cote, decision, and Brubaker. Rick Wilson takes it behind his net. Played for Brubaker. Cote now takes it off the boards. Cote moving in on the left side, flipping it out, and Brubaker cuts in front, kicked out by Gosselin. Brubaker moving in. Now Poudrier takes it for the Express to Julian. Julian's pass. Lemieux redirects it. Getting to it is Rick Wilson. It's chopped high and over the glass into the crowd. And here we go with the Lupa line. That line didn't have a very good shift that time, so maybe the Lupa will curry. And who's the other person on that line? Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall, of course. Yeah. Taylor Hall in danger of losing his five straight with a goal streak here. There's only 2.32 to go in the third period. Gary Lupel on the faceoff against Boudreaux. They'll have to drop it again. Time definitely becoming quite a factor now as the Express try to overcome a two goal deficit. Hall is in there to take the draw against Cote. Cote wins it back to Bukaboom. Over to Botker. Shooting it slowly down into the Fredericton zone. Donnelly comes back to pick it up and take it behind his own net to try to set something up. Gord Donnelly. Pass up through the middle for Hall over his stick. Bukaboom takes it for the Oilers. Shoots it into Fredericton territory. Gord Donnelly goes down. Now he has it again in the corner. Plays to Belland on the near side. Four checking is Boudreaux trying to jam it up against the boards. Lupel knocks it loose, but Cote is there. Puck squirts out to the point. Bukaboom sends it back in around the boards. Donnelly can't play it. Cote in front for Boudreaux. Now Donnelly plays ahead for Curry. Curry's pass for Lupel on the left side. Gary Lupel puts a move on Bukaboom in front for Curry. And the net is knocked off his moorings, and Curry is down. He's got to be thankful for the magnets there. He went in pretty hard. He did. Good defense by uh, Botker there, covering up Curry, keeping him from getting a chance on that return pass. Gary Lupel showing you his speed on that play, making that chance by Curry happen. And we're down to a minute, 41 to go in the third. The McIntyre line will come out now. Dunk McIntyre between... David Bruce and Mike Stevens. Bruce has played an excellent game tonight for the Express in his first game back from Vancouver. McIntyre taking the draw against Biggs. McIntyre wins it back to Pudry at the left point, moving in. Quick shot off the pad of Skordensky, taken by Rick Wilson on the left side for Graves. Clears, but held in by Julian. Fires a shot. Gets the rebound of it. Bruce in front, trying to find the handle. It is taken by Biggs now for Nova Scotia. Don Biggs, head manning it for Cote, racing into the corner. Cote, bumped by Poudrier. Graves, 
Intercepted by Bruce. Bruce moving up the side. McIntyre takes it now for the Express. Dunk McIntyre leading the attack. He hits the Nova Scotia line for Bruce. Band on it. Julian can't hold it in. He'll wait for his teammates to get onside, or try to at least. Tying it up against the boards, and they do jam it there. The faceoff will be just outside the blue line of Nova Scotia. 12.59 seconds left. It certainly doesn't look like we're going to have an express win here tonight. Many fans are already leaving thinking the decision is in the books. That's bad news. It not only do the Express do not gain ground on Sherbrooke tonight, they also lose another game. Sherbrooke will have one more game in hand. It'll be a different story. Andre Savard wants to talk it over. It'll be a different story if the Express and Sherbrooke met three or four more times. You could pretty well decide your own destiny, but the way it is right now, they only meet once, and that's in early April, the second last home game of the year. Uh, I would have to think that it's going to be decided by then, unless the Express really come on. They're going to have to pour it on at this point. After this game, Nova Scotia, keep them in mind, will only be five points back with two games in hand. So the Express are uh, barely ahead of the Oilers, actually. And you have to think if the Oilers had even a portion of the players they have now, there's no way they'd be in that position. So it'd be a three-way dogfight, literal dogfight for that final playoff spot. Uh, no question. It's all been... three teams, Sherbrooke, well, Sherbrooke's had the healthiest squad of, of the three teams, but all three have had uh, injury problems and call-up problems, which have hampered their success. Rogers wins the draw. Gosselin is looking to uh, leave the ice for an extra attacker if the Express can get it down deep into Novi territory. Claude Julian is taking it behind his own net now. Just 45 seconds to go in the third. Gary Lupel crossing it and the Express are offside. Gosselin was going to leave the ice. But, David uh, Bruce came on as the extra attacker. Gosselin going back to the net now or at least halfway between the net and the bench. But uh, with only 42 seconds left. This would certainly be a comeback of comebacks, <laughs> wouldn't it? Lupel and Rogers will take the face off. Rogers controls it. Bookaboom now from the right side. Dumping it into the corner. Julian has it for the Express. Out to Lupel. Lupel to Poudrier on the left side. Dumping it into Nova Scotia territory. Botker is back there first for it. He clears, but not out. Taken by Poudrier at center now. Headmanning it for Curry. Botker has it. 17 seconds to go. Solheim moving out. He's checked, though. Now Rogers has it. The Express net is empty, remember. Julian shooting it across ice. Bukaboom off the glass. Poudrier can't control it. Gord Shervin has it now. This is going to do it. The Express have lost. Nova Scotia picking up a victory. And that will move them to within five points of the Fredericton Express with, uh, as we say, two games in hand. MVP in this game, got to be first star. I don't know who's picking him, but if Warren Skorodensky isn't first star, there's something wrong. There ought to be an inquiry. He <laughs> played a heck of a game for the Oilers and really kept them in. The Express... The Express didn't play that badly, really. Uh, outside the first period, of course, they would have won the game, but uh, the Oilers made the best of their chances in the first period, and you, you can't do anything about that. They forechecked pretty well, but I thought the Express just didn't get a break. That bad luck, combined with good goaltending, I think, did them in tonight. The Express out shooting Nova Scotia 39-22. to That says something about the goaltending of Skorodensky. surprise there. It was Warren Skorodensky, the first star of tonight's game. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. He stopped 38 of 39 shots that he faced. 
Second star, Mike Stevens, very strong game for the Express. Third star, Jeff Brubaker, who had a goal for Moncton. Moncton, huh? I mean, of course, Nova Scotia. But that is going to make it all the more difficult for the Express to make their way into the playoffs. They now have played one more game than Sherbrooke. The uh, Canadians have a game in hand, and they're six points up. The Express have just ten games left this season to make up the difference.